Like well, just, yeah. the, just the day before. Yeah, um, yeah. I say I've, I've put my website, I've got an FAQs on my website with various random bits and bobs. Mm. And one of them is don't get a haircut before because it never goes to plan. And it, mm. it always, I, I don't think I've ever had someone show up and say I had a haircut yesterday and it's come out brilliantly. I'm so pleased with it. Uh, let's shoot these headshots. And welcome to the Young Performers Podcast. So what next? Uh, now this month is going to be very exciting. Uh, it is a headshot special. So uh, for the next four episodes, you're going to be hearing some advice from four of the UK's leading headshot photographers. They're going to talk us through how to get the most out of your session, what to bring, etc. And if photography is something that interests you, we'll be touching on how to get into that as well. So without further ado, photographer number one. Michael Shelford. But yeah, so so yeah, so tell me about wait, so so Bristol, how which course did you do? Did, is it just a one course? When I was at Bristol, mm. I did the two year diploma. Ah, cool. Uh, awesome. So I went to university first and then went straight to Bristol. Mm. Uh, trained as an actor, like quite a few headshot photographers out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and sort of do the acting side by side with uh, photography. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So when did you start? Um so like yeah, so when you So you said you did photography at the same time as John School, when did you actually start? Becoming a photographer? Uh, well, it was a hobby at university. And mm. then when I was at drama school, I managed to save up for a fairly decent camera. Mm. And in the final year, a lot of my mates were just like, uh, I can't afford a train to London, let alone a headshot photographer. So why don't you take my shots? Mm. And I was like, yeah, sure. And they were, they were really awful. <laughs> uh, but uh, rather than get a bit disheartened by that, I was quite interested to in why mine were awful and the other ones I saw in London were great mm. uh, and so I just kept practicing kept practicing and trying different stuff and then yeah just when I finished drum school just put a website up really and thought I'll take mm. it from there and if I get something great and if not no problem I'll just mm. do it for fun so how long have you been a uh, photographer? so I graduated from drum school in 2009 and started oh. pretty much exactly the same time mm. so yeah how long was that to uh, terrible maths eight years yeah so which photographers were the ones that kind of like inspired you to want to do like the ones you went oh those are great shots uh when i was at drama school uh a lot of the shots we were looking at were wolf marlowe's he's Mm. obviously still very prominent at the moment um but also a lot of the photos back then were back then as if it was Mm. years ago but they they were all in black and white so uh, that made a bit of a difference but yeah, uh, it was mainly Wolf Marlow at the time that I was like, wow, that's awesome. I love what, mm. what's, uh, what he's done with that kind of stuff. What was it specifically about his shots that you... Um, I really liked movement. the life in people's eyes. Mm. Uh, and yeah, I just felt there was a lot going on behind the eyes mm. uh, in those shots. Um, and also, uh, I thought he made everyone looked very individual and unique which is mm. quite good I think yeah and what was so what so when you say you your ones were crap at the beginning what, what we say has changed <laughs> in a sense uh, <laughs> I did a lot I mean when I started I lit, my first try I went out into a field with a mate and with some tin foil that I put under his face <laughs> and it made him look like an alien and it was awful uh because all the light bounced straight back into his eyes and it just looked terrible. Mm. Um, and then, you know, it was around the time that you could get quite a lot of uh, uh, tutorials on YouTube and stuff. And mm. so I started looking into bits and bobs and I uh, was very uh, adamant that I was just going to stick to natural light, which is what I do now, actually. I shoot predominantly with natural light. And just started shooting with a load of the windows in Bristol or Vic because they, they had this big old building with all these big windows which was mm. quite nice light so just practice there really um, yeah and just tried to hone it a little bit and mm. see what it was that I liked about it and what I didn't mm. so forgive me if like, I sound really naive here but like uh, I always hear the difference between indoor studio light and outdoor light like what, yeah. what actually is the difference like, uh, well the difference studio light is you know it's flash heads it's mm. tungsten light it's all that kind of stuff uh, and it can be amazing when you know how to use it properly. Mm. Uh, I'm just not very good at using it. Uh, I'm just not that keen on it. Um, mm. 
I find natural light is a lot more immediate and easier to mm. judge. Uh, but you know, the headshot photographers that use studio light are incredible at it and do it extremely mm. well. Um, yeah, I just prefer natural light, I think. Mm. Um, and my studio is kind of set up to emulate what you get in. A lot of uh, headshot photographers, myself included, when I started, shoot underneath tunnels because you get amazing light on people, the way mm. it sort of lights people's faces. Uh, and yeah, trying to create that kind of light in here mm. um, is always uh, what I aim to do yeah. uh, to get that quite nice, soft balance. Yeah. Um, so when you look at a photo from any other photographer, mm. can you tell if they've been using natural light or indoor light, or is that yeah, down definitely. to their level of skill? Or? No, 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 no. You can, you can, you can tell. easily tell. You can usually mm. tell by the way the light is reflecting in their eyes. You can oh. see the catch light if it's a studio mm. light. Or a flash, you can usually see a little, mm. you know, a little dot in their eyes. Or if it's a big window, then you can see that in their eyes. Mm. It's fairly easy to tell. Mm. Uh, of course, some some photographers mix it, so they mix daylight and flash. Nick Dorks does that a lot. Adam Hills does that a lot, and there and Michael Wally as well, and they're all brilliant at that. And mm. and that can be a little harder to figure out when you're looking at someone's face mm. with all kind of catch lights going on the eyes. Uh, well, but that's a pretty good skill. Yeah. Would you say the natural light versus um, I'm trying to think of the term like manufactured light um, <laughs> uh, would you say that it creates any stark different feeling in the photos themselves or is it um, just it depends what effect you're going for with mm. the studio light uh, uh, but you know generally generally you want to light someone really um, uh, uh, what's the word uh, you, well you want to light them really well uh, but flatteringly yeah. um, and there are different ways of doing that with different studio lights and stuff mm. uh, but I just find natural light for me is easier to control uh, with all my bits of weird boards and stuff in, in here yeah I'm looking around now seeing like wow <laughs> it looks yeah. pretty bizarre and I swear if other photographers came in here they'd be like what the hell is all this rubbish and it just looks completely um, crazy but yeah it works quite well yeah. I remember my first ever headshot photography session I um, I was kind of always expecting because I, I was like giving the addresses of where my studio is and I thought it was going to be really elaborate with like different backgrounds and it was going to be like really fancy and professional looking and then it just looked like I'd stumbled into some abandoned warehouse <laughs> like I mean it wasn't at all I think for what my expectation was and um, all it was was like literally a window two boards and one light and he would just mix the four things together like yeah, I mean, that's all you needed yeah like, sometimes that's mm. all you need and, and you know you, it doesn't have to be that complica complicated mm. it can be really simple Chris Mann he just shoots with one flashlight uh, headlight and or, uh, or a big window up against mm. a white background uh, and sort of really focuses in on the person which I find very interesting mm. so it can be really really simple mm. um, yeah which is quite nice I think mm. So if you're looking back at like, you know, so how old were you when you graduated? Uh, um, oh, sorry, from no, 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 How old was I? Uh, that was seven years ago, so I was 26. 26. So if you could chat to 26 for old you and yeah. give yourself some advice, like starting out, uh, what was the biggest, I said, well, yeah, what was the big piece of advice, the biggest hurdle you ever came? Uh, the biggest hurdle, that's a great question. The biggest hurdle I think for me was um, uh, was figuring out that um, natural because I wanted to use natural light that natural light is different every single day mm. so the light today is completely different to yesterday and being able to adapt to that mm. because I was finding I'd get a setup that I loved and I'd be like oh yeah this is great this is awesome and then I'd come in the next day and it'd be completely different and I'd mm. feel like I'm back to square one um and also not, not to worry about making mistakes as long as you sort of mm. learn from them and, and move forward, then that's mm. fine. It's very easy, I think, well, particularly when I started because I didn't know many of the other headshot photographers like I do now and it's quite a solitary thing. So it's easy to beat yourself up and go, ah, oh, that photo looked rubbish that I took of my mate the other day. Um, and so just being okay with that and going, yeah, but that doesn't mean you're bad. You just need to work mm. on it and, and keep going. Mm. Uh, that was a big moment because uh, I think it's quite easy to go nah these photos are terrible I'm giving up I'm an awful photographer um, which is a shame because you yeah. want to keep going I think yeah and on like the kind of the business side of your career as a headshot photographer yeah how 
how did was there like a big learning hurdle? Oh, sorry, yeah, learning hurdle in terms of like that. Like, um, did it all come quite naturally? Did it flow? Uh, do you know, what? I, it was it was just really lucky because it's all word of mouth, really. Mm. You know what uh, the acting community is like. People go, uh, "Who did you have your headshots done with? Uh, with so and so? Okay, and what were they like? Yeah, they were good. All right, great, I'll go with them." Mm. Um, and you know, it's it's the laziest form of business because every headshot you do is a free advert as long as it's not terrible. Yeah. Because that actor takes that headshot and intentionally shows as many people as possible to get their career out there, mm. which then kind of like a parasite you're sort of <laughs> yeah. on the back there. Um, so it's really easy. I, like, I, mm. I didn't do any promotion. I didn't really do any advertising. I put a website up and it just slowly, you know, the ball yeah. starts rolling a bit. Mm. I, think, I think I was slightly reluctant to push it because you don't want to shove it in people's faces and be mm. like, look at me, look at me, look at me, because that's slightly off-putting. Yeah. Um, so I was like, you know, if people want to shoot at me, that's fantastic, I'm, I'm for that, and we'll just sort of see what happens. Yeah. And would you say there was a specific time, can you keep in on a specific moment where suddenly it started to really snowball? Yeah, because or... originally I started shooting in my girlfriend's flat, <laughs> and she was really nice about it, and she was like, yeah, cool, that's no problem, but, uh, and she had a housemate as well, and she's like, limit it to... Uh, three days a week though and I was mm. like yeah no problem um, and there was just an amazing corridor with some really nice light there and then when I had to like repeatedly turn people away because I couldn't fit them mm. in that's when I realised I needed to get a studio yeah um, because my girlfriend was a bit like well, you are just bringing random strangers into my flat every day and you don't even live here <laughs> so <laughs> taking liberties a bit but she was pretty patient with me until yeah. I le- uh, left to go to another studio which was good mm. um, that's when it started to snowball, about two two years after drama school. Cool. Awesome. I think that's when I noticed it, yeah. So um so if I was so if you're kind of uh, so okay, if I took myself as an example, when I was in um uh, third year yeah. and or going into third year and we had to start <laughs> looking up hedgehog photographers and yeah. constantly looking at all these things, all the questions were popping up. Like for example, I was part of this course which was kind of a hybrid of musical theatre and acting. I was yeah. Like, yeah, talk about it. But um we always had this kind of question, oh, do we get a more MT shot or a more mm. acting shot? Like, do you believe there is a difference between an MT and acting shot? Uh, um, there can be, yeah. I mean, it, they're kind of bleeding into one now. I, mm. I, I feel like the industry, like I'm shooting, I wouldn't say originally I'd sort of done MT kind of shots, but I'm shooting a lot more MT people now because they want to branch over into acting and stuff. And, and now with really amazing new musicals, it, I feel like there was a bit of a stigma about musical theatre actors not being able to do normal acting, which is mm. completely ridiculous. Of course they can. Um, so maybe when we came out of drama school, there was a little bit of a difference. Um, but yeah, not so much now, uh, mm. I would have thought. I mean, you know, like Adam Hills, who runs Mug Photography, does these amazing sort of glossy kind of uh, shiny photos for MT people, and they look incredible. Um, but then acting people get them done as well. So, mm. uh, so would you say that is the believed difference between the two types of shot? Is a more glossy? Uh, a little bit, maybe. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'd say. Yeah, probably. Mm. I'd say that it's a little bit more glossy. It's a little bit more shiny. Uh, there's a lot more studio lights. Mm. Uh, you know, like if someone comes to me and say, "I want a really sort of RSC shot and then a really MT shot," I'll light that very differently and set that up yeah. very differently. So, how would you set up the RSC in quotation marks? Sure. Um, <laughs> well, without giving away any like trade secrets oh, or anything, like, or I haven't got any on blagging it, completely blagging it. So, I would usually start off with a fairly neutral muted background for an RSC mm. shot. I mean, that's such a cliche phrase. A classical theatre shot. Yeah. Get a very simple. Uh, light shirt maybe mm. um, and uh, very soft lighting mm. so it's quite even um, and yeah keep it fairly neutral mm. uh, and then empty I usually just uh, play around with loads of different lights put put a few lights in the background get some you know lens flare on it whatever see mm. what happens and it, you know if it doesn't look good it doesn't look good but you just play around with it until yeah. you get something that sort of pops a little bit but yeah I'd say I use a lot more sort of bits and bobs and mm. weird shiny backgrounds for MT stuff than I would for, mm. for sort of classical theatre. Mm. Another thing you were just saying there about um, 
messing around until you find it. Mm-hmm. How do you personally know when you found like a good shot? What is it about? What's the dip like? Uh, well, I think for me, it's that the background is interesting enough, but it's not distracting. Because mm. I think really, if someone's looking at your headshot going, that's a good background, then you failed. <laughs> they're not looking at you. So yeah, if there's an interest, there's a bit of interest in the back, but not too much that it's distracting. Mm. Um, and, and, and trends, you know, there are trends. When I left drama school, everyone was leaning up against a brick wall. Uh, everyone. Uh, and that sort of died out a little bit. My first headshots, I was leaning up against a brick wall. Mm. So, yeah, just if it looks interesting enough um, to make a quite a sort of unique image, then that's great. Mm. Uh, so I'll just, I'll try and put enough in there that it catches the eye, but not too much that people are like, mm. what the hell is that yeah. going on in there? Well, also, also when yeah, when I was when I was at the end of like second year looking for photographers and stuff, another question that we kind of people kept asking was or a phrase I kept hearing was we were looking at certain photographers and people would go, oh yeah, I I really think this photographer would be right for me. That this would really suit me. Yeah. Um, how? But my always my fear was I couldn't ever tell how would I how do I know what is right for me. Like, I've never mm. seen my, my face on a headshot before. Like, yeah, true. So how do you... Can you think of any way maybe a performer would know what type of headshot photographer would be right for them? Yes, the yeah, I think... Just look at their work and look at their website. Like, I think as photographers, we all try and put our sort of own voice in the copy on our website. So you kind mm. of understand what we're like as, as people as well. Because, you know, it's, it's pretty odd you're going to meet some random man or woman that takes 500 photos of your face doing nothing for two hours Mm -hmm. so yeah I would say if you like their work on the website you you can imagine you in a shot like that and you like the sound of them then Mm -hmm. they're probably right for you it's unlikely that there's a photographer out there that you go oh yeah they're definitely wrong for me Mm -hmm. Um, unless you don't like their photography if you like their shots you know it's their job to make sure they're right for you when Mm -hmm. you book them really Um, so it's more about the photo. If you like, if you like their work, mm. that's the main thing. Cool. And then moving on to someone actually coming to your session. Yeah. Um, what would how how can someone get the most out of their session? Like, what is the um, best both um, mentally and physically? How do they prepare and prepare themselves? All these things. Like, how would you say is the best well, way to prepare yourself? Physically, I'd usually say, you know, don't have too many crazy nights out running up to it. I did have one lad that showed up for headshots at 10am and he'd been out till like three in the morning the night before, so he clearly didn't listen, but he must have had a good night. Um, yeah, I always try and say get a good night's sleep, but then the problem with that is if you tell somebody to get a good night's sleep, they won't be able to sleep. So yeah. saying, don't think of a pink elephant. I mean, it's going to cause them problems. So yeah, I think as long as you come with an open mind, um, it's handy to know the kind of things you want to do uh, I'm never annoyed with someone for being over prepared like you know if someone says I want this 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 and this that's great because I can follow their tick list mm. uh, that's not uh, a problem for me uh, from my point of view I always like it if they bring too many tops rather than too little mm. so that we've got enough variety we probably might only use six of them mm. but it's uh, better to be you know over prepared mm. than under um, but yeah, knowing what you want to get out of the session and just being willing to talk through the photographer, uh, your, your sort of plan in your head, what you want to get from it. Um, mm. And just being very open-minded, I think. Yeah. It's helpful. Cool. Yeah. Um, and when it comes to, say, yeah, when you say, like, is there any other things, like, uh, like people saying things like don't get haircuts and stuff? Two weeks before, fine, but, you know... Mm. I, and whenever I get my hair cut I leave I haven't got much hair left but when I do have my hair cut I leave going oh that's awful mm-hmm. and then you know a couple of days later you're fine with it it grows into it but yeah I usually say avoid anything drastic just before mm-hmm. getting your hair shots done cool. um, yeah uh, if you think over all of your favourite headshots you've ever taken um, of all of your favourite not like your favourite clients but like uh-huh. uh, if yeah think of your like your top 10 photos you ever took can you think of is there has there been any similarity between the attitudes or any similarity whatsoever in the way that those clients came to their session versus other ones like can you see any correlation um, mm. that's a great question I don't know I don't think so because like every headshot that I love is, is, is usually a fluke because <laughs> you know 
the headshot before it and the headshot after it might, might not be as striking. It just happened to be that exact angle in that environment in that top as they were pulling that sort of facial expression. Um, no, because if I, I think if I had the answer to that, I would do that every single time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So, but that's why I like headshots is because they're all completely unique and every single person is completely different. Mm. And I think that's why I haven't got bored of them because mm. uh, every single actor is completely different to the person before mm. and proposes different challenges and stuff like that. Mm. Uh, and yeah, that's what's interesting about it, I think. Mm. Do you, so when you, uh, when you have actors kind of in your sessions, do you have... Do you want them to just be as natural in themselves as possible or yeah. try and maybe show any what they believe they're casting in British uh, wants to be? Well, yeah. certainly, yeah, you can do some, you can push it a little bit so you've got some different sort of character type shots. But I think your main headshot wants to be you looking good on a good day, mm -hmm. uh, looking comfortable, relaxed, looking like the person that someone wants to have in a rehearsal room or on a set. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's the, that's the most important thing for me. And then obviously once we've got that in the bag, then we might push it so that we go, all right, let's see some of the, the darker side of you or the lighter side of you mm. and the younger side of you, that kind of thing. Mm. Um, but the most important thing is showing you on a good day, I would say. Cool. So on the, on the subject of like a lighter side of you, mm. one thing I was always really worried about when I was about to have my shots was I hate my smile. Okay. Or at least if I ever try and smile on a photo, when I'm like, I never smile whenever someone puts a camera in front of me, like for right. we're in the night out, because I just can never just smile normally. I was like, <laughs> oh. and I know I have a few friends that are a bit worried about trying to get just a natural looking smile. How, yeah. how do you try and get like natural smiles out of people? Do you ever find that's an yeah. issue, or do you? No, not usually. <laughs> I uh, have a couple of um, stock things that I say mm. that usually. Uh, elicit a, a, a natural smile mm. um, it's usually some form of ripping the piss out of myself yeah. uh, <laughs> that allows them to smile um, and I've got loads of things that work quite well with that um, mm. uh, and it's very rare that I'll get to the end of a session we haven't because I quite like the session to be fairly light hearted as well mm. I don't like it to be taken too seriously so if we get to the end of the session and there hasn't been a smile, I will use a trick to get them to smile. I just don't really believe in one, two, three smile. I think it's like going up to someone in the street and telling them to cheer up. It's not going to work. <laughs> if anything, you'd make it worse. Um, and same, I think if you say one, two, three and smile, you get this fake forced, awful, mm. yeah, awful sort of response. So, yeah, a few um, repeated uh, lines that I use to get mm. people to smile a little bit, which, yeah. Involves ripping the shit out of myself. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> um, awesome. So, yeah, going back actually to um, yeah, the question regarding like your know, the best clients ever. Yeah. Um, do you obviously without like naming names in any way, but like, have you ever had clients like the entire session was just horrible to run and can you explain what it was about the session um, like in yeah. terms, not, not in terms of like they were a horrible person right? no, that, sure. obviously, but like just in terms of like it just weren't getting anything from them yeah. and you never got a good shot from it sometimes I mean there's a there's, there's a number of factors that contribute to that um, I did a shoot for a, a very very nice man who came in and had 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 um, really 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 bad news a couple of days before mm. um, and and had decided to just carry on with the shoot and uh, it would probably been wise maybe not to um, and uh, you know he was adamant that we carry on and so I did but I mean he was his mind was somewhere else understandably and so we didn't really and, and uh, uh, you know any number of tricks that I had wasn't going to work to try and get him to mm. sort of relax a bit but I guess there, there can be any number of factors that contribute to that uh, the main thing for me is if people shut down like nerves like I've seen nerves like you wouldn't believe I've seen panic attacks vomiting crying like mm. a lot of people myself included like cannot stand having their photo taken and it can really really be a horrible experience running up to it thinking I've got to have all my photo taken um, and, and some people shut down by <coughs> just they go into uh, you know safe mode and just they won't talk they won't uh, you know, react, and that can be quite tricky because in the, the day it's it's two hours just me and one person. So if they don't talk, it can get quite 
it can get a little bit awkward because it's just me sort of asking them endless questions and mm. and then you know um but that doesn't happen that often actually mm. actors are very open people i think and mm. are very uh sociable people and so that's very rare that that happens um mm. if someone's feeling very ill that's another one because they're mm. so preoccupied with that obviously and some people do continue to you know some people come to the session even though they're they should be in bed. <laughs> really, I've had that once or twice, but yeah, I don't think there's a general rule about what can make shooting someone hard. Mm. Um, yeah. Mm. And is it so? You find that if someone is really, if they've had like you know, terrible news, or they're incredibly ill, it's they're never going to get as good a shot as they would. You know, can, can the mm. can the stars align and you still get away with something? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, yeah, sometimes. But you know, <coughs> if someone shows up and they've mm. they've got awful flu, their eyes are bloodshot. And they, I think actually it's more about that they don't feel very good in themselves. Mm. And I think their confidence will be a bit lower. You know, if I've got terrible flu, the last thing I want is someone to take my photo. Because I'm like, I look awful. I look terrible. Um, and so, you know, that confidence in yourself to go, no, I'm feeling okay. That won't be there. And that mm. will probably show a little bit. Mm. Um, but I would always advise if you're feeling ill to flag it up with a photographer a couple of days before. Because usually they can swap someone. Yeah. If someone says to me, I'm feeling really ill, can we postpone it by a week? It's fairly easy to get someone to bring their session forward by a week. So mm. I would usually say definitely, definitely flag it up with a photographer rather than try and get through a, a, a dicky tummy or something like that. Mm. You know, try and get through it. Yeah. Okay. Um, one question I meant to ask earlier, but completely forgot to. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> have you ever done any outdoor shots? Or, yeah. Um, and oh, Brilliant. Um, amazing. So it makes this question much easier. Um, <laughs> have you... Um, so do you, what, what do you find is the difference, if at all, um, between a studio shot and an outdoor shot? What, uh, so my studio, which is natural light and yeah. outdoor, I say the, the huge difference is the British weather is a nightmare. <laughs> so it can be gale force winds and actually it can be raining and I can still photograph in natural light in here. Mm. Um, when I first started, there was a, an amazing tunnel that I used to use and it was really beautiful light. It just was so lovely. But... I would say three out of five days of the week you couldn't shoot next, it was too windy. Mm. Um, and you don't want to be battling against the elements when you're trying to get someone to relax and stuff. And yeah. that would be the main thing. Like if we all lived in LA and we just had that amazing sunshine the whole time, then mm. I would probably shoot outside all the time. Mm. But yeah, here you know what the weather's like. Even in the summer, you've got torrential downpours <laughs> and you can't stand up because it's so windy. Yeah. Um, but that's the main thing for me. That's the only mm. reason. And also, it's cold. Yeah. Um, you know trying to uh, you can't really photoshop someone's feeling really cold out do you know what I mean red nose streaming eyes hair everywhere they look a little bit tense yeah. um, that would be the main thing is trying is, is the uphill struggle with the weather mm. basically yeah I definitely had a session where I was yeah sh- like actually shaking like my knuckles getting white it was yeah. fine actually I think we got away with it but yeah, yeah there was a moment where I was like I was going to go inside for a bit, like, yeah, sure. Like, yeah, <laughs> like was, yeah, there are ways around. Yeah. And it was summer. It was the middle of summer. Really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Um, so, yeah, I, I think I'll uh, just a couple more questions. Yeah, but, sure. um, first of which is, if it was anyone else that was about to just start, like, completely from scratch, they thought this sounded like an interesting profession to start off in, yeah. where would you tell them to start? Uh, I would tell them to start with their friends, someone they know very well, uh, outside under a bridge on a mm. nice day with a reflector mm. cool um, and then take it from there mm. learn from your mistakes uh, keep going with what you like and throw away what you don't mm. um, but yeah starting with friends basically mm. you never want to just go in and deep end and just suddenly decide you want to start charging because the pressure of that will hinder your creativity I think yeah. you want to be with a mate that you can show a photo to and he can go oh, or she can go no that's no good because of this or no I love that and, yeah. but yeah just playing around with it I'd say and and having fun with it if you're having fun with it that's the, the best start yeah cool yeah and um, we have one last question that we ask for everyone yeah um, which is uh, the show is called uh, so it's called uh so what next? The end performance podcast. Yeah. Um, so our final question for you is: So, what next? <laughs> what next? Uh, yeah, what next? I don't know. I uh, I, I'm fascinated with shooting people. 
So it's just uh, continuing with that, trying different uh, different styles. My end game is someday, somewhere, someone will call me and say, listen, we need a portrait of Barack Obama and you're the man. <laughs> I can go and take that photo and I can yeah. hang up my camera and go, I'm retired, thank you very much. <laughs> uh, I think the chance is slim about happening, but that's what I'm aiming for. Amazing. So that's what's next. Hopefully. Cool. Brilliant. <laughs> awesome. Well, Michael, thank you so much. Thank you. It's been an absolute pleasure. You've been enjoying it. Amazing. Um, yeah. <laughs>